Welcome back to the Booty Bands More Than Fitness podcast, your host, Danita. And today we're going to be interviewing Coach Daisy, how to break those self-limiting beliefs and start to really find your true self-love. Coach Daisy, if you don't know, has been with Booty Bands since the very beginning of when we started. She has lost over 100 pounds naturally, and she's one of our highest energy coaches in our app. She's been loved by so many of our members, and she is now one of our accountability coaches, where she works one-on-one with members, walking them through their mindset, their nutrition, and their workouts so that she can customize their results for them. Let's get started. Booty Bands and Barbells helps busy women sculpt and tone their bodies in just 15 minutes a day through our physical products and our one-on-one coaching. Okay, so when I think of self-love and going down this beautiful journey of booty bands and barbells world and meeting all these different women of all over the world. And one of them was Daisy. (laughs) I did not expect to meet like what an awesome friend that you've become. And, and uh, it's it's been tremendous. And one of the things that I recall is doing a self-love challenge. And you posted this picture of you just holding your skin of all of your a hundred, it was a hundred pounds of natural weight loss. And you just were writing this beautiful post. You don't remember what people said. It's the feeling they left you. And I remember the feeling that you left me that day of just total, that self-love and that self-confidence that women truly need to see and that we're not alone in this journey, that we can actually really be relatable in so many different aspects as no matter what size, shape, color we are, we're all in our own heads about what we want to be. And we start really being our worst enemy of what that love means. So what comes up for you as I shared that? I think a lot of it is just self-limiting beliefs that have been just pounded into our heads throughout childhood and into adulthood through not just like social media, but I mean, just mainstream marketing Even when we were looking at the Sears catalog when we were kids, you were all very petite women. And this was the idea of beauty, right? You had to fit this little mold if you wanted to be beautiful. And so what that created was just a bunch of food addictions. It created a bunch of mental health illnesses, including anorexia, bulimia, because we were starving ourselves to fit this mold, right? And so now I think the shift that we've seen in the last maybe five years Um, is embracing the journey all the way along. Because when we're stressed out about that number on the scale, what does that do? It's going to increase that stress hormone cortisol, which is going to ultimately counteract anything that you're trying to accomplish, because it's actually going to start storing the fat. So what I found just through my, my journey, not only was I seeing results faster, but I was a lot happier going through it. Just circle back to that picture that you're talking about where I'm holding my loose skin. It was It was one of those days where I just decided to toss back and forth the idea of having surgery. And I just kind of looked at myself in the mirror for like a really long time. And I finally just grabbed it. And I was like, this is literally my trophy. I worked my ass off to lose 100 pounds. And I am so grateful to have this loose skin on my stomach because it shows how hard I worked to get to where I am. And it was just so freeing to post that and to have the tremendous feedback that I got from that. I mean, I had hundreds of women reach out to me over that photo. It was so inspiring to me to just keep going and just know that, hey, you're on your right path, right? Absolutely. Yeah, a couple things come up. I relate so much to that. And I think if you're listening, obviously you can relate on your own experience of what that is. And I have a couple that come up to mind and I obviously did a bikini competition. And as you're working so hard to reach this goal, and then finally you're there, you're holding these trophies, but then in the back room, you would look at like some girl's arms and be like, oh, I want those arms or look at some girl's butt and be like, oh, I want her butt. And this like moment of like reaching this goal, it just shows you that it's like this goalpost, this like flag actually never really stops. I was personal training and this girl, beautiful girl, Yasmin, and she came up to me. I was like, all right, what are your goals? And she goes, yeah, I just want to be like, da, 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 like all these things. And it's basically just what I was back in my twenties. And I was like, cool. So when you were in your twenties, were you happy with what you had? And she was like, no. So it's like, even if I bring you to your twenties, like, when are we going to just be freaking happy? It's just like this, this mile marker always moving. And it really has been an interesting conversation with women that 
I just actually just got off a call with a girl and she has already lost two inches in her waist. She's clearly, you can see her entire thighs, her waist, her arms, her back, like everything's changing. But this extreme weird negative fog comes over her. And I was like, I'm confused. Like you were, we're progressing. Like this is, this is amazing. It's working. And she goes, I know, but it's like this weird thing that can't be happy until I'm at my final destination. And I was like, interesting. Like, it's so true. I relate to that too, of just like not even embracing and loving the journey of it, of just even realizing that it's working, but instead just like as humans, we just need that like instant immediate gratification. Otherwise we're holding ourselves in this pretend gel. I don't know. Anyways, what comes up for you? (laughs) Well, I think that's uh, super important when you're establishing any goal, especially when you have such a big goal and typically weight loss is going to be a large goal um, for most people. And I think it's really important to establish smaller goals along the way. Right. And I was going through my hundred pound weight loss. It wasn't like, I was like, I'm going to lose a hundred pounds. No, my goal was 10 pounds. And once I hit that 10 pounds, I would set another goal for 10 pounds and I would just keep chipping away. But every time I lost 10 pounds, I'd reward myself with something. And it was typically workout clothes or, or I wanted to reward myself with, but I wrote it on a board and I made a visual of it. And, and it just made the entire thing much more achievable. Mm -hmm. And I believe that it gives you the hope, right? Because 10 pounds is much more achievable than a hundred pounds. So it gives you the hope and the dedication and the motivation to keep going until you hit that mark, because you know, there's a reward there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting as, you know, you and I are coaches, we sit back and we see this on a daily basis and just watching their journey and how, if they, if they don't set those, those small goals, it's like this crazy spiral, right? I mean, I've been there. If I don't reach the goal, all of a sudden I'm like, well, I'm just going to eat my feelings, right? If it's not working, well then just, I'm just meant to be fat. And then your mind takes you into this whole different direction. But I want to go into the next part of like limiting beliefs. And I want to know your viewpoints here on this. For me, I always was brought up with the belief of I'm just the big girl because my mom was like this five foot five, really small, petite woman. And I stood five foot nine over her and just had more of my dad's genetics. So for me, I just had that kind of bigger bone structure than my own mom. And I I remember like talking to her, I was like, What's wrong with me? And creating that belief in my mind of I'm broken. Like, why didn't I get your genetics? Like I got my dad's, which is masculine. So am I, am I a man? Like, <laughs> like all this like weird shit, you know, coming to my mind of like, I'm just, I guess the big girl and just kind of identified myself with that. I want to hear what comes up for you is creating these beliefs at such a young age. It's, it's so true. It was always the biggest of the three kids. And it was just because, oh, you took after your dad, right? My dad was a bigger man. His whole family was bigger. Most of my family was bigger. Looking back now, I attribute it to diet. I had a working mom, a not present dad. She did the best that she could. But I mean, <clears throat> nine times out of 10, we were eating hamburger helper and cereal. Just everything that they fed you in the 90s that they told you was so good for you. And it really just caused just a vicious cycle for me that I had to unlearn in my 20s. I had to relearn how to eat and what was actually needed from my body. I think that's kind of the biggest thing is just kind of reprogramming yourself um, when you are in those spirals to be like, no, hold on, there's a wealth of information on the internet. I can go find one recipe that I can meal prep for myself. And it's just breaking free of those self-limiting beliefs because they're not serving you anymore. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for sharing that. To share our own personal experiences is so key. And I'm hearing it over and over and over again of like, wow, thanks for sharing your story. Because oftentimes we look at other people and we don't hear their story. So we just create an assumption like they never had to go through it or what have you, right? I remember when I was younger, probably in like fifth or sixth grade, and all the other girls were getting a chest. And I wasn't. So I was like, again, that belief of like, I'm broken. Something's wrong with me. All the other girls are getting a chest. Like, why am I not? Right. And, um, and then on the flip side, I'm hearing from girls that are in the program that when they had the chest, they got teased. So it's like, you couldn't win or, I mean, at some point it's like, no matter if you have a chest or you don't, like at some point we create this like belief system in our mind of I'm not enough or whatever the reasons are. And so I ended up, I remember distinctly going up to my mom. I was like, mom, (laughs) why don't I have boobs? (laughs) 
uh, as I wasn't expecting to say this on the podcast today, but okay, mom, why don't I have boobs? And she's like, all right, well, if you want boobs, I'm going to have you drink a bunch of vitamin D, really fat milk. And I was like, okay, great. So in my mind, I thought that milk was just going to be boobs. That's it. I was like, sweet, this is going to be great. So I was drinking gallons. Like I'm talking like ready for my boobs to pop in like next week. I was going to be drinking that gallon of milk. And I did. I remember for months and months and months, I was just drinking as much as I possibly could until the opposite happened. My stomach and my thighs grew. And I was like, wait a minute, what's going on? Again, another moment of I'm broken. Something's wrong with me. How come I didn't gain boobs? My mom is my biggest hero. Like she wouldn't lie to me. So like, why did my stomach and my, my fat and like cellulite started to kind of really creep in in that time in my life. And I was just like, oh my gosh, (laughs) I guess I, I guess I just can't have boobs. I do have a breast augmentation. And I think that's important to, um, always, you know, I like to always be honest with people like, yeah, I have a boob job and people always ask me like, what's my opinion of a boob job. And I say, you know what, if it makes you happy, do it just do it. Like what this world is your world. You do what makes you feel good. And I'm going to say it with this. If you go get a boob job, then you're going to look at yourself for a couple months and then you're going to wish you were bigger or you wish you would have went smaller. So it doesn't stop you guys. It really doesn't. No matter like what gets in your head of boobs, not boobs, the skin, the not skin, like at some point you're going to just, again, like we just keep doing that. So what is something that we can stop that spiral days, or at least for you, what do you do to stop that spiral? It's embracing, right? Gratitude, be grateful for your body and what it can do. I think the problem is we focus on the details a lot, especially as women. The details are kind of pointed out in everyday media. The fact that we focus on the details so much, we're not focusing on how we feel. We're not focusing on how much stronger we're getting, how much heavier our lifts are getting, focused on that number on the scale or how low those calories are that we can get in a day and still function half-assed. Just the diet culture in the this country is just so ass backwards for me that keep teaching us that, hey, we need to cut calories, we need to move more. And it's just, it's creating a world of confusion. Yeah. I just got done with a podcast with James Monroe. You guys are going to either hear it before or after this. Please go listen to it. It's a phenomenal podcast about um, her eating disorder and how she had a belief at, that food was fat. And I was like, oh my gosh, I relate so much to that. That in life, especially in this culture, and I'm not sure others, but especially here in the United States, it was very much like the as little of calories is what's going to be the resort. And now we're in that intermittent fasting world right now. So, so many women are just skipping meals and starving themselves thinking that they're going to reach your goal because in their belief, it's what we've been taught that food equals fatness, that calories is the problem. And so we're like, for women, we're like, well, no problem. I can fix that. I'll just stop eating, which leads to then no energy, right? Then plummets into why we don't work out. And the whole thing just turns into this vicious cycle. And so it was really fascinating as we talked about how food, as we think about really that it is fuel to put the protein into the muscles, the muscles becomes a metabolism, the metabolism burns the fat. And now as coaches, how we can literally witness this. You got to share with us, Crystal. Crystal, we're giving you a shout out right now. Share what it is being a coach and seeing Crystal's transformation. Man, Crystal has been blowing it up. She has been just diving headfirst into the accountability program. She's sending over the pictures of her food. She's staying dedicated. She's doing the workout. She's adjusting her macros. And she has seen a three inch loss in her waist in just two weeks. And she's lost two inches off of her hips in just two weeks. So that just goes to show you that eating more and dedicating to strength training and actually building those muscles up, like you said, does speed the metabolism and you are going to burn fat so fast, Mm -hmm. so fast. Yeah. Not so cool to witness that. Gosh. Oh man. All right. So for those that are listening right now and they are just, oof, they are just struggling with that self-love, that worth, that worthiness internally, that confidence inside. They're just really struggling. What is something that just in the present moment, what comes up for you? If you're just maybe talking to your old self or talking to somebody that's listening right now to really break them through that. 
energy is motion. You have got to start moving. Start moving for yourself it's hard to get up out of bed but it's also hard to lay there for the rest of your life and literally spend it miserable you have to choose your heart what way do you want to go know that once you're done with that workout you're going to feel a little better maybe if you just go for a walk whatever prep your meals for the next two days accomplish something and then write a to-do list add something else to the list and accomplish that more anything to be one percent better to get to your goals because you're not going to get to your goals staying in the same place you are today. So envision yourself in a year. Where do you want to be? Okay. It could be business wise. It could be health wise. It could be anything mindset wise. Where do you want to be in a year? And if you're nowhere near there, map out a plan to get there. Set up 12 little individual goals that you can accomplish monthly to get you to that end goal and then just do it. That's it. Just do it. You know, what I love about you, Daisy, is that no questions are given to you before this podcast. It's so <laughs> at the cusp and like, yeah, it's like you don't even think you just freaking know. And that's what I love so much about these podcasts is just like, boom, like, you know, when you somebody lives it, breathes it, just feels it because they're just they're aligned with it. It's just so cool to to just ask a question immediately gives this amazing, amazing answer. It's just like, wow, it spoke to me too. celebrating those small wins that came up multiple times. You just that 1% better. We get into that perfectionist mindset. So thank you for sharing that. I know that will hit a lot of people listening today. If you guys don't know who Daisy is, Daisy is a badass. You guys, she did our podcast recently on bravery that you got to go check out. I had people literally messaging me being like, day, day, um, <laughs> a whole freaking another level of like bravery. And now she really explained about kind of her past and where she's been and where she's going. So if you're, um, if you're still wanting to listen to more podcasts, go check that one out. Turning into our master coach here at Booty Bands and Barbells as we focus on helping women sculpt and tone, but we do that in a very unique way. We're using three pillars, mindset, workouts, and nutrition to make sure that it's a sustainable transformation because we've all can get a transformation. Sure, that's easy, but a sustainable one through mindset, workouts, and nutrition, now that's a whole nother level. So it's about making you an expert because you're actually synced up with an expert. So really cool. Just giving a little shout out here for Daisy. I love you so much. And just, I couldn't even imagine doing this without you. I really do. Like every day I tell the executive team, like, dude, Coach Daisy's like, I mean, look, I'm already getting emotional. And uh, Coach Daisy just sent me this really amazing breakthrough video yesterday that had me on my knees crying yesterday about just how she as a coach is working on herself because it is, you have to work on yourself and be able to continue to keep going through that fire at the very front of the fire to let the others know behind you, hey, it's safe. It's okay. We got you. How cool is that, huh? Anything else come up for you right now before we close out? I think so. Just embrace yourself where you are but envision your higher self and don't stop. Don't stop until you get there. Mm, absolutely. All right. I'll go ahead and leave that a link down below. You can schedule a call with us and see if you're a great fit for the accountability program. Anything that you guys are needing, we are in the Facebook group as well. So the booty bands and barbells, women's fitness, Facebook group, you can go check it out. Don't belong into the workouts. We're here for you. So lots of love. Have an amazing rest of your day. So I have really never stuck with anything for more than six months until I found booty bands and barbells. It's life-changing. The progress over perfection mindset has been so life-changing. Have self-love and to have self-worth. I just do the 10 minutes and I'm already reaping the benefits. The workouts are fun and that they're effective. I have seen great results that I never thought I'd ever see. I love it because I'm keeping the weight off. We help hold each other accountable as they commit to our goals. The booty bands and barbells has really changed my life for the better. I have to be real with you. The past six months really took a toll on me and my body. I felt incredibly stressed, isolated, after being a good 12 to 13 pounds heavier, I said, that's it. I'm going to make healthy choices. And I'm happy to tell you today that I am actually down 15 pounds. I feel amazing. I feel like I lost fat and put on muscle. I have a lot more energy. So it's never too late to start. You can take control again. Thanks, Booty Band Nation. Positive that you will get more sculpted, more toned, and you're going to love those new healthy changes and our community and our coaches. From where you're at, no matter where you are, or how long you've been in the position. So just click the button below to book the call with our team.